Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 3, Episode 4 of our Teachers in the Hall podcast. I'm John Zingali. Uh, I apologize for the voice, but, you know, screaming at the Blazers game uh, <laughs> does that to one. Uh, the three things I'm most thankful for this year, um, Bernie Mittens. you got to love the Bernie Mittens meme that gave everyone a lot of uh, fun uh, pictures to do and play with and uh, it brought a lot of joy for a lot of people for an extended amount of time it was one of those longer running memes still enjoy it um also too the seattle kraken um i am from my my mother-in-law father-in-law it's a hockey family we have hockey in seattle it's exciting and i have to say the the jersey the logo the kit whatever you want to call it it is perfection and then last but not least ted lasso um <laughs> You got to believe and believe, and uh, I love everything about that show. So thank you uh, to those that created that masterpiece. And I'm Erin Lark, and I too am extremely thankful for Ted Lasso for bringing that flavor, spice, and laughter to leadership. The episode about beard was one of my favorite episodes ever, and who doesn't want to celebrate a Christmas like the Ted Lasso crew? Um, I'm also super thankful right now for libraries because we're getting into that really snuggly environment here in the Pacific Northwest, and when you can go and be surrounded by books and the stories of others in these times when we've had to take a separate place maybe from others in ways that we've missed connecting with people. When you go to libraries, you can bring stories in. And so as we're still figuring out how we're gonna take care of each other and be our best as we work through the pandemic, a library is a great place to remember that there are so many stories and places to go in this world. And the last thing that I'm very thankful for is pumpkin spice cold foam, which I learned to make myself. And so now that's what I'm doing every morning. I gotta say, I would not be thankful for that because I don't enjoy pumpkin, but you know, well, there's no pumpkin in yeah. the phone. I, I have to say, I'm also thankful for our special guest that we have today. Aw, uh, me too, me and too. If you want to give him the so lead in here. So we are super excited for episode four to welcome Vancouver's brand new superintendent who is not new to our community, has had a wonderful legacy of service so far, and we are so lucky to have Jeff Snell, Dr. Jeff Snell, in our studio right now with us. And so thank you, Dr. Snell, for meeting us here. We are so happy to have you and to get to chat with you and um, talk about what it means to be thankful. My, I am so happy to be here, and I loved hearing your gratitudes as well, and I, I share some of those. Uh, uh, with you, so yeah, oh. happy to be here. Are you a Ted Lasso fan? We kind of we have to ask. Yeah, I am. You know, I, I kind of discovered it late in the game, and then um, you may see random belief signs around the district that we've kind of started to insert places. Right. So, um, stole that from Columbia Rivers principal uh, was doing that, and thought, oh, that's a great idea. Love it's it. Definitely above my classroom door. Since and uh, above the my office there. space. <laughs> yes, we believe in belief. Um, we have a, a very important question right off the bat. We're talking about thankfulness, November, Thanksgiving. We want to know what is your favorite dish on the Snell family table? What is it for you that will get you there on time? Well, you know, I'm always on time for dinner, so it doesn't even <laughs> require a favorite dish. I, I definitely celebrate food and, and I'm grateful for uh, food and how that brings people together and just the memories that come up from food. Uh, but probably the the stuffing is 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 my go-to. Uh, my mom makes a pretty uh, killer batch of stuffing, so that that's maybe the center of the plate, and everything else is kind of attached to it in some some way. I like that. A nice a nice stack. Is it the bread-based stuffing or the rice-based? It's it's bread-based, and she puts a little sausage in there too. Um, and I gotta ask, gravy or no gravy? On oh, it? gravy on everything. Like, I, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I'm a gravy guy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like John. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, so thinking about these things, um, what's a life experience that you've gone through that you're thankful for having gone through it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a great question. And um, there's so many. I think that, um, you know, life is, uh, you know, it, it can be challenging right now. I think a lot of our families and students and staff are feeling that challenge. And um, as you mentioned, I love the way you described the library, Aaron, and just the, the stories of people. So I think, um, you know, every opportunity, every day, there seems to be a challenge that kind of uh, uh, potentially has the, the, the opportunity to define you or to, like, kind of make or break your day. Uh, but it, it, but it, to, to think more broadly, I would say, you know, being a father is, mm -hmm. is probably the thing that I'm most grateful for. Um, 
you know, and, and to be a father, you know, that, that goes with being a, a husband as well. But um, the, the learning that I've had um, from that position um, has just helped me so much to be a better educator. Um, better servant. Uh, I, I thought, you know, I think I was an okay teacher before I was a father, but boy, once I became a father, I like recognized um, just what it meant to be a parent and how um, parents were pouring everything they had into their kids. And I was so grateful to be able to share in that. And so that perspective of being a father, I think, is the thing I would uh, talk about most. Yeah. It's definitely life changing. And, and, you know, being a teacher and parent, as it was an error, like yesterday, I did parent teacher conferences and it, you know, my, my teacher role stops and my parent role starts, and it, it's, it's definitely a, a new experience, that's for sure. And I think it really speaks to what we mean when we say empathy and along those lines of stories. When we find a connective piece that changes our perspective to be something that's more inclusive of what other people are experiencing and what their interaction is with school. And it really uh, changes, I think, the relationship and gives us all a different piece of that pie. And Absolutely. So thank you for that answer. Yeah. And, I know that you have taken on a big role in this, um, and I was curious, now that you're a couple months in, what so far has been the biggest challenge in stepping into this new role? Um, the challenge really hasn't changed from my previous role to this role. I think, um, as I mentioned before, just the times that we're going through, I think as educators, we do this because we want to help people. And for the most part, during my career, I've, I felt like we've been able to help people or I've been able to help people. There's been a, a challenge that's come up and we've been able to sit down and maybe meet those needs uh, collectively. Over the last couple of years, that hasn't always been the case. Like you're identifying um, needs that, uh, to be honest, there aren't any short-term solutions for. So like when we're in remote learning, um, you, you recognize that students and staff and families really needed to be in person and yet you couldn't deliver on that. And so um, that, that's been pretty frustrating. And then it's translated over to this school year because even though we're in person, which we're so grateful for, um, there's just a lot of needs out there that um, it's not difficult to identify the needs, but it is difficult to meet those needs. And when you don't have um, the staffing levels that you need, and, and you know, of course everybody in the country and the world is dealing with that, um, there's just not enough people sometimes to wrap around a student or a family or not enough people to support a staff member that's given it their all and is just feeling like, oh, I don't know if I have more to give. And then uh, going home at night and being a parent or being, you know, mm -hmm. so it's just um, that part has been the most challenging, I think, um, as, I, as I look at the role and the responsibility of 20,000 students and 3,500 employees and, you know, how can you make it better for each of them? Um, so that's what keeps me up at night. But, um, you know, that's also what drives me <laughs> as a leader. So it's a, it's a, it may be a little bit of a, um, a challenge and a huge opportunity. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. All right, so Thanksgiving is that day where we kind of sit down and traditionally it's always just been two games, right? You get uh, the, Lion, the Lions always play <laughs> or the Cowboys. Yeah. So uh, I'm kind of like Midwestern area here at, at heart. Um, Bears or Lions that day? You know, it's Seahawks, no matter what. Um, so, but, you know, uh, the, the nice thing about not having your team play on Thanksgiving all the time is you can just enjoy the, the stuffing and not get too worked up about the game. But, um, yeah, so uh, I always used to like watching um, both the Bears and the Lions because of Walter Payton and Barry Sanders. <laughs> so those made those games really interesting. But I'm a go Hawks guy all, all through and through. So. <laughs> and then follow up to that, um, I know... I used to do it um, in high school and college and later on, but we'd get together turkey bowl, yes or no? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so from early on, always playing football on Thanksgiving. And then as we've gotten older, we've tried to find just, uh, well, I've gotten older and the kids have gotten <laughs> stronger. Uh, those games have morphed into some football, some soccer. And then lately we've been trying to play some pickleball too. And okay. that, I can kind of still compete at the pickleball uh, with, with my kids. And I have two kids that are in college and and one that's a sixth grader. So, uh, you know, I'm starting to lose ground on them, but pickleball is maybe the sport I need to yeah, keep going it, with. It, it's uh, funny because in Chicago, like here it's, it's rainy, so it's kind of muddy sometimes, but we get the snow there and then uh, you're all bundled up and <laughs> you hit that ice sometimes. And, um, but yeah, so it, it's, it's a lot of fun though, right? Yeah. And then you come back in, then you 
you were like, where's the turkey? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, we need round two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and growing up in the Southwest, um, we would often take the turkey leftovers and make them into all sorts of other things. We'd have soup, we'd have um, chimichangas, we would do all of that. And then instead of playing football in the dirt because it's the desert, um, we would instead be doing crafts. And I come from a family of teachers and nurses. So there would often be crafting we would do. We um, used to knit items for our local hospital and then make hearts for nurses. So I think that some of that is gonna come back to our year. Um, we, we I don't know also, how to play pickleball yet, so I um, gotta figure that out. And like when my grandfather was too old to play, um, we got into big board games. So usually there was yes. a Monopoly game going Puzzles. on somewhere, yeah. um, you know. But. I, I think that's great, and I just um, it reminded me of what we try to do in the classroom is just include, I mean, because Thanksgiving is about community, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's about bringing people together, and um, sometimes you don't always get to have that opportunity throughout the year, so it's a really special day. Uh, but in our classrooms, like, it's building community every day, right? And so thinking about um, what does inclusion look from that standpoint? So the board games allow, you know, some people that might not be able to play football, the crafts, you know, the giving back to others. I think service is a big part of Thanksgiving, too. And so um, just those connections, and I, I'm grateful for what our teachers and our staff create in the classroom every day with that lens of, like, how do we bring everybody to the table? So, And I've noticed that about you, um, that... And it's kind of a, it seems like it's a cornerstone pattern that I've received as, as a staff person that you are looking for ways to make connections with individuals and to express um, not only what, what your beliefs are, but also to listen. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious if in your leadership, you know, we're, we're thinking the Ted Lasso, we're thinking the football <laughs> or the soccer, or all these things and um, what it means to be on a team and to remember that a team is made of individuals who all need that care. So I was really curious what one of your favorite little ways to show gratitude is. I mean, you know, to staff or to anyone. Yeah, it's interesting um, to try to show gratitude um, from my as an individual, it's just in the daily interactions with people, you know, and I mentioned father or husband or friend, um, those kinds of things I think are really ex important. But in my role with, um, you know, a large community and a lot of staff and students, you have to kind of create opportunities that, or structures that allow you to come back to gratitude. Um, and so one thing that I like to do is I email all staff every, every Sunday. I've done that for the, like probably the last seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like it's my um, privilege that I get to see the district from a very unique perspective. Um, I get to see students, staff, bus drivers, everybody from uh, working their hardest. And so I really try to think about how can I amplify voice and story in a way that um, shows gratitude, but also doesn't, um, it's not necessarily about me, it's about the community um, being able to see others and what they're doing. And, um, like, wow, I didn't know that that happened there, or this is so cool, or listen to this student talk. And I also think um, in sharing that and thinking about gratitude, I want to try to frame the district every day that we are very fortunate to be in the business of helping others. Mm. Like, not everybody gets that opportunity. And when times are hard, um, I know that even um, in the most difficult day, a lot of our staff can think, well, I helped that person or I helped that student. And, that's a big deal, you know, just to be human. And so I think um, trying to frame each week that we have opportunities um, to, to serve in um, ways that others don't. And so not to minimize how hard it is, but let's take advantage of those, right? Um, I love, uh, I heard this phrase um, one time that everybody could use a miracle every day. Mm. And um, it's, it's like, what's a miracle for some person is like, like it might not be a big deal to you, but for them it was like the biggest deal. And so I think um, when you work with kids, you get to make a miracle happen every day. So I, I just try to think about that in the structures that I create to hold myself accountable to kind of like reflect out all this amazing awesomeness that I'm seeing happening every day. I love that. And that um, when you gain that energy, then you don't want to keep it. You want to give it. So that's why Absolutely. it's something that keeps going down the line from person to person. I love that. Um, and so, you know, You've you've been here in Vancouver. You've grown up here. You've you know you've moved you moved away, come back. What's something that you think? Um, I'm thinking of like my, my Hamilton quotes are running through my head too. It's like, <laughs> what what is a legacy? But like you know, as you start to think about what you've accomplished in your life and what you still hope to accomplish, like what's one thing you you hope you're remembered for, um, even after you're gone after after this mm -hmm. position and things like that. 
You know, I think the greatest legacy is nobody remembers you. That um, there's stuff that happens and it just, you know, you've created structure. So number one, I want student voice amplified. Like I, I oh, it's just, that's been fundamental to who I am as an educator is like taking student voice and raising it up. It's always made me a better teacher. It's always made the community better. Um, so that's something that I, I, I definitely hold on to. Uh, I definitely hold on to like building community too. So those are things that I, I definitely want to be a part of. But I think a true legacy is that nobody even re realizes that you are, I mean, it's just there. Like five years later, people are like, wow, like we're, we're doing some great things here. And the great things are happening because of all our 3,500 amazing staff and 20,000 students. And it's not attached to me in any way. It's just who we've become together. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely, you know, think about community a lot. I try to be really intentional about student focus and student voice. Um, but I don't really, I, don't, I just don't think of it from those terms. I just kind of think that, um, you know, we're here, we're able to maybe make something a little better and contribute that. And typically when we do that, it makes ourselves a lot better. So, um, so I, I just really like that process of like establishing structures and systems that allow people to be their best. That's wonderful. That is uh, the true explanation of service and how we give unto others. And, you know, when you have that, the giving, there's the thanking, there's the thankfulness, there's that recognition, and then that ability to carve your own service in that same light. And really to remember that the end of our day, what we do is for students. And I, I mean, I'm most thankful for them every day um, and the ability to change lives with what we do. So thank you for that. And I have a really hard question uh -oh. along those lines now. It's the last <laughs> one. Um, John and I want to know, what is your favorite pie and why is it apple? <laughs> well, it actually is apple. Um, yes. And it's uh, uh, my mom, I, I referenced her twice here tonight. Um, so the, uh, and my mom's name is, is not Cookie, but she goes by Cookie just because she's an amazing baker. I and, love it. And she's got the, um, just this, the sweetness of baked goods kind of comes out in my mom most of the time. She can be a little salty too. But, um, <laughs> And so uh, she has always made a really good apple pie. And so that has been my favorite forever. And then we as a family, since I was really little, um, always went and picked apples in the fall. And so you pick the apples and then you had the fresh pie that night. And so that's something just that's, that's a part of who we are as a family. So definitely apple pie. Correct answer. Yes. Ding, 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 you win the prize. <laughs> And now Thank with the you. Cosmic Crisp apple. The Cosmic Crisp. To, yeah. yes. I haven't had a Cosmic Crisp apple pie yet. So I have not either. I'm going to so have to look I'll into have that. to try it out. It sounds like we have a collective goal. A science experiment. <laughs> a science experiment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Snell, for coming and being a part of our podcast, for bringing your leadership and your vision to the district. We appreciate what you're doing for all of us in our community. And I'm thankful that you're here leading us in that and I know I speak for both of us when I say that so thank you so much for being here and we hope we can check in with you again absolutely I really appreciate you guys doing this like this is awesome right and just another way for our community to engage with who we are and what we're trying to do so thank you for your service thank you okay. and uh, you know that's a wrap season three episode four once again um, I want to say thank you to my brother um, I don't know if he's going by son of star killer anymore and he just <laughs> dropped a new album because that's <laughs> what he does for fun uh, Matthews and Galley for some of our music. But um, as always, we want to hear from you. You can always contact us on Facebook, uh, on Twitter, um, at Teachers in the Hall. But um, as always, we want to hear from you and let's keep those conversations going, even if they're not in the hall. <laughs>